Uh, Dr. Amar, we are good to start. It's three o'clock, right? Yes, sir, good to start. I think we given timing three o'clock, no? Some other fine. Yes, sir, we are live now. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Ashoda Hospital's first nursing webinar series, which can, which can enhance and update the knowledge of uh, knowledge to improve the standards and patient care quality. I am Dr. Amar, Associate Vice President, Medical Services, Ashoda Hospitals, Hyderabad. I am happy to introduce our eminent uh, moderator, Dr. Hemlata, Senior Intensivist. She is with us since decades in uh, ICU uh, cardiac critical care. I introduce uh, our uh, speaker, eminent speaker today's Pratusha Chaudhary, AGM Nursing Education and Training at each of the hospitals. Uh, we all know nursing is the backbone of our healthcare organization and uh, nursing plays vital role in patient satisfaction and clinical outcomes. To improve the quality care and uh, nursing standards, uh, we keeping nursing training web series every Friday 3 p.m. Uh, These uh, sessions will be there fixed every Friday 3 p.m. We will get to very important and uh, interesting topics, a lot of lateral thinkings and uh, eminent speakers will get you. Please be log in. Uh, uh, one more thing is like... <clears throat> uh, this uh, webinar uh, is there in multiple platforms like Zoom. Uh, it will be there on Facebook and a uh, uh, lot of other platforms uh, will update you soon in that. And uh, this uh, platform is mainly uh, given for benefit to, uh, to all. It is open platform, not limited to our organization. All the nursing fraternity, it will be teaching institutes for the ho all hospitals and uh, everyone can participate into it. We'll get through the session. Now, today's session is ECG, Interpretation Made Easy. And uh, this our renowned uh, speaker, uh, Pratusha Chaudhary. She is uh, expertise in trauma and critical care, certified in management of stroke, ACLS, and ECG. Beyond this, her passion towards teaching made her uh, to design and implement many critical care modules and other specialty modules as well. So let's begin. Over to our uh, Pratusha. Please take over and start it. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for the introduction, sir. And this platform uh, would, is really important for all the nurses so that we can uh, update your knowledge and we can also share what's really going on in the world. And I think Ishida Hospitals is doing the best in uh, giving the platform for the nurses to learn online. If we have the challenges in the life, I think that is going to make us to face uh, either a fight or a flight situation. The same thing happens in the ECG also. So when there is a flat line in the ECG, that states we are dead. With this quote, I start, I start this ECG interpretation made easy. Before going to this session, I wanted all the participants to say, are you excited to this session or not? Just type in the chat section that yes, you're excited. So we can start the session and really I'll make sure that you will try to interpret completely after the session about a basics of ECG. Yes. Stella, Sija, Lavanya, Sirisha, Daphne, Jesse. Wow, great. So everybody are excited, I hope. So let us not wait for the uh, delay this. So we'll start the session. Yes.
Just a minute. Uh, reshare the PPT and close the PPT and reshare it. So let us start with uh, the main, a small scenario that I wanted to give you in the beginning so that we can discuss about the same and the end. So a 45 year old uh, admitted in the ICU with the RTA, that is nothing but the road traffic accident and you are monitoring the patient, what action will you take when you see this rhythm? How many of you know this and what you wanted to do? Just give me in the chat section what you wanted to do. So do you uh, say that, yes, uh, some shock needs to be given or no, uh, a shock doesn't require? You can share in the chat section. Yes, we need to shock. If not, no shock is required. Oh, wow. Many of you are knowing that it's, the shock is required for this. Okay. Let us not reveal what is the rhythm, but at the final, we are going to see that what is this rhythm exactly after the interpretations. So whenever we see these rhythms, oh my God, what is this Greek and Latin? Are we going to do this exactly or not? So that's our, uh, exact, uh, the, that's our question. So let us not delay in understanding the basics. What are you going to learn? So in this session, I'm going to detail you about the quick review of heart, conducting system of the heart, normal mo morphology, there's PQRST waves and the ECG, and why it is called as 12 lead ECG. We use only the six chest leads and the four limb leads. Why it will be called as 12 lead ECG? And how to read an ECG paper? And always people feel that it is a Greek and Latin after a longer sessions. But this session would make you sure that you will be reading the ECG paper easily. Systematic interpretation of ECG by just taking the five super steps and normal sinus rhythm versus arrhythmias. So these are the main uh, uh, key forms which we are going to do. So quickly about the heart. What does the heart do, does? So it's just nothing but it pumps the blood and it takes the blood away from the heart and it carries the blood towards the heart. And how many chambers are there? So just for the overview, right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, left ventricle. And we have again the four valves. So talking about this, first, if we wanted to understand clearly what is ECG, First, we need to see how the ECG rhythm will be formed. So the first thing is nothing but electrophysiology. What is electrophysiology? Electro is nothing but electricity and the physiology, the function that it makes, the activity that happens in the heart. So just nothing but the conducting system. It has three super principles. One is automaticity. So for the automaticity, SA node is the main one. Whenever SA node is uh, also called as a natural pacemaker of the heart. When we see that the natural pacemaker is not working, then happens to go with the AV node, that is atrioventricular node. The atrioventricular node, if SA node is not sending any kind of natural impulses, then what the AV node will do is it automatically acts as a gatekeeper and it starts uh, uh, pushing the impulses towards the bundle of his 
and towards the bundle branches that is the right bundle branch and left bundle branches and finally the purkinje fibers which makes a cardiac cycle so first uh, principle is automaticity so automaticity is known for sno to initiate the impulses and then is excitability once it starts initiating the impulses automatically it will start receiving the impulses where it gets excited that is nothing but the av node and the bundle of his and finally what happens is it will try to conduct that is called conductivity where it will try to sweep all the uh, it uh, it tries to sweep the cells to re, re, uh, to reach this electric electricity that sets nothing but where it will try to contract and try to relax to pump the blood out from the heart and during this we will try to form a morphology of the ecg so here are the normal ecg waveforms what is about this how the p wave forms how the qrs and what is the t wave so just to understand you can see this picture which is been here p wave starts when the p wave will appear here you can see a small bump so this is nothing but the p wave so when the sa node tries to give the impulses means the both atria sinoatrial node when it tries to give the impulses automatically the atria both atria will try to conduct and tries to form a p wave and the qrs so qrs is the most dominating one and i can say this uh, atrium will be called as single bedroom and the ventricles will be called as master bedrooms why because if you see this picture atria occupies lesser space compared with the ventricles so here you can see the most dominating wave in whole the ecg morphology is qrs that's why the p wave then the qrs and then the t wave when both the atria contracts we form a p wave when both the ventricles contracts we form a qrs and when both the ventricles relaxes we form a t wave now you should get it out ventricles are contracting it is trying to relax atria is contracting but we cannot see that wave form in the ecg why is it as i said to you the qrs is trying to dominate the most and it is trying to create the masking activity of the p wave so that's where we talk about the pr interval during that time itself the p wave will try to rest and again it tries to uh, give the contraction continue the contraction with the ventricles so this is how and for the, your easy understanding what is meant by depolarization always c follows d the other name for contraction is nothing but the medical terminology depolarization if you talk about relaxation it is nothing but repolarization r follows r and c follows d so this is about the p q r s t waves can i just see in the uh, question in the chat section about how many waves we have 1 2 3 4 5 or 1 2 p q r s t waves how many waves we have p q r s t p q r s t how many waves great 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 dogeshwari jubar samina wow crazy everyone are trying to answer the questions i think everybody are alive and lively in the session thank you so let us see this again so now we understood the morphology p q r s t let us see the p q r s t we understood that p is for the atrial contraction both the atria contracts and q r s is where both the ventricles contract and it forms a q r s complex that's why it is called as complex as it uh, to deal with the complex also it's very difficult for us so and the rest is t t is trying to rest there so it's the easiest wave that we have to identify now the pr interval so let us see the morphology how it happens exactly after 12 lead ecg now what is called a 12 lead ecg so if you see here leads are nothing but whenever you talk about the leads just nothing but it's a picture means it it acts like a camera from all the different uh, areas like how we do take a selfie from the up from the front from the down and all this the same thing the leads are also going to do so here the leads are going to take the pictures of the heart and its activity in different turns so we have different kinds of leads that we need to discuss and i'm going to reveal how it is going to be a 12 lead ecg and few leads cannot be visible but it it is trying to relate with the poles so the bipolar leads unipolar leads and 
precordial chest leads. We have three types of leads. Bipolar leads, bipolar, means nothing but it is trying to travel from one pole to another pole, means two poles. So here we have lead one. You can see this is nothing but an enthobion triangle. If you see this, this is nothing but lead one, which is trying to uh, leave from right arm towards the left arm and towards the right arm towards the left leg and towards the left arm towards the left leg. And always the right arm, right leg always will be placing a neutral row. So we should never place a uh, uh, C about the neutral, uh, sorry, uh, about the right limb. Right. Uh, so this is about the bipolar leads. That is lead one, lead two, and lead three. So now we are going to know about unipolar leads. Uni itself says that it's only one direction. So it's argumented vector right, argumented vector left, AVF, argumented vector foot right, left, and foot. So you can see here, AVR, AVL, and AVF. It is again going to show you the directions from the top and from the down. So now, from the right wrist, from the left wrist, from the foot. So this is how we are going to attach the limb leads. And now going, going back to the chest leads. In the chest leads, we have six chest leads. V1, V2, V3, V4, and V6, or we can also call it as C1 to C6. So this is how uh, we talk about what is called as a 12 lead ECG. If you count now, it will become a 12 lead ECG. I also will try to show you about the chest leads and the limb leads. So now there's a question for everyone. Only thing that you need to do is you can just touch on your screen, whatever the answer that you choose. So we have a sequence of conducting system that I'm going to post. So which answer would be the best? So if you understood this session, obviously I can see that you can understand this. So now that is the time and I'm going to close this within a few seconds. So now this is the time you can answer, just need to click it. So which is the sequence that you feel that it is right? Sequence of conducting system of heart. I'm going to share you how many members have made it wrong, how many members have made it right. So choose wisely. Great. So many are answering. Oh. Come on, come on. We're going to stop the poll. Just a click. Great. Superb. I'm going to end the poll. I'm going to end the poll. So just see. What is the answer? SA node, AV node, bundle office, bundle branches, also the Purkinje fibers. So this is the right sequence. So let us go for another poll. What is the natural pacemaker of the heart? Is it AV node? SA node, SV node. Great. SA node, AV node, and SV node. Superb. Actually, people are uh, literally answering more than now. Uh, oh, great. Very active participants on the webinar, I hope. So now I'm going to end the poll. Just see. See, AV node is called as a gatekeeper of the heart and SA node is called as a natural pacemaker of the heart. So the answer is SA node. Let us also take one more question. When ventricle contractions occurs, which ECG wave is formed? When ventricular contraction occurs, which wave will form? Is it PQRS wave, P wave, QRS complex? I said you, which is a dominating one? Which is the most dominating one? Great. Super. So let us end the poll. I'm going to share you the results also now. See here. So PQRS, it stopped there. 
So what is when the ventricular contraction happens, the ECG wave is formed is QRS complex. When the atria contracts, we form a P wave. When the ventricles contract, we form a QRS. And both the ventricles relaxes, we form a T wave. So let us take one more poll. There's a last poll for this. Okay. So this question, again, I'm going to repeat. But before that, try to see this. If the PR interval of a patient is 0 0.20 seconds, then is it normal? We didn't discuss this, but I'm going to discuss about this in the next one. But still, people are going to answer it correctly. Super. Great job. Bob, great. So I'm going to end the polls. The participants are really uh, going uh, very active and everybody are participating in this. Great. So if the PR interval of a patient is 0 0.20 seconds, then is it normal? Yes. I'm going to discuss about that. Again, I'm going to share the same poll in the later session. So let us stop here. And then uh, if the participants are raising their uh, hands, please wait and we are going to uh, answer your questions at the last. Great. Now the real movie starts. So what is this 12 E ECG and how we need to understand it? I said lead one, lead two, lead three. These will be called as bipolar leads, AVR, AVL, AVF will be called as unipolar leads. V1 to V6 will be called as chest leads. So this is how we will be seeing the 12 lead ECG in the ECG paper when you take. So now let us take this last final one. What is this? Again, the lead 2 is here. Why it has been repeated? So always a lead 2 will be considered as the as a standard lead. So whenever you wanted to read, you doesn't need to know about all this. In case if you doesn't know and need to understand only the simpler ECG form, then you can just go for the second lead and you can need to just understand the PQRST, PQRST. That's it. And now we are going to see the complete morphology of how we need to interpret it. So this is about the 12 lead ECG. I think you can just read out now the bipolar leads, unipolar leads and the chest leads. This is how the ECG looks like. And you doesn't need to confuse much when you see this ECG paper. Because you know all the uh, leads now. And now let us talk about what is this ECG paper looks like and how we need to read it. It's a very simple form that you need to know. There's a big box. So this is called as a big box. So this is how it looks like. But don't think it is a big boss. It's a big box. Okay. So this is a, a large box. I can say it. And there's a small box. So large box always talks about how we need to calculate the one. And here, whenever you see the horizontal line and the vertical line, the horizontal line always speaks about the time, how the ECG rhythm runs. And when you talk about this uh, vertical line, the vertical line always talk about, uh, talks about the length and the uh, uh, how much millivolts or millimeters it is trying to increase. And it needs to be into the normal morphology. Now, coming back to this one, one small box in this one will be considered horizontally 0 0.04 seconds. Means one small box is 0 0.04 seconds. How much will be two boxes? 0 0.08, 3, 0 0.12, 4, 0 0.16. And 5 will be 0 0.20. Means if one small box is 0 0.04, means five small, uh, small boxes will be 0 0.20 seconds. So this is how you need to read about the ECG. Means if you know about the big boxes and small box, then it will be easy for you to understand. So this is about the big box and small box. If, if you want, you can also make a note. So this is how it looks like. You can just take a screenshot later. You can just get back to that. Because if you don't understand this reading, it will be a little difficult for you to understand the basics of ECG. So the ECG paper, which we take, will be 10 seconds and it will run with a speed of 25 millimeters. 
and one small box will be 0 0.4 seconds, 0 0.4 seconds, and one large box will be 0 0.20 seconds. So five small boxes. More than this and less than that, PR intervals or QRS that we are going to discuss. Because if you know about this box, then only we can discuss about the normals, no, normal or abnormal. Horizontal, I said you about the time. Vertical means it's about the length. So one small box means one mm. I, I spoke about the timing when it runs about the horizontal. When it runs towards the vertical, it ju just means like one box will be one mm. 2 mm, 3 mm, 4 mm, and 5 mm. So this is how it runs in the horizontal and vertical lanes. And we, if, if we see the components of ECG, so PR interval QRS makes a major role. So PR interval, whenever the P wave, the beginning of the P wave till the beginning of the R wave, we call it as PR interval. Means the time that has been taken for the atr to start the contraction and to initiate the ventricular contraction. That is where we call it as PR interval. So the PR interval will be mostly between 0 0.12 to 0 0.20. Means three small boxes to five small boxes. This is really, really important. Please make a note because when we are trying to discuss about the, uh, are trying to interpret the exercises in the next later session, you need to say that, okay, PR interval is 0 0.12 or 0 0.20. Means how many boxes we need to calculate. And then the QRS complex, the most dominating wave. So here, always it needs to restrict its liveliness. Here, it will be always making sure that it will be narrow. Narrow is normal. Remember that. Not much narrowed. It will be always 0 0.04 to 0 0.12 seconds. So this is how it will be QRS complex. The time needs to be really noted to understand the basics of ECG. So the PR interval is 0 0.12 to 0 0.20. And if it is QRS complex, it will be 0 0.04 to 0 0.12. Means one small box to three small boxes. Great. I, I hope uh, we can go ahead. Everybody are uh, getting this? Yes. Can I see S in the chat section? Going good? Yes. Great. Super. Super. Very nice. So this is about the ECG components. We have P, Q, R, S, T waves. T wave forms when the atria contracts. QRS forms when the ventricles contract and the T wave forms when the ventricles relaxes. And we have PR interval, which is 0 0.12 to 0 0.20. And the QRS is 0 0.04 to 0 0.12. So let's talk about the next, what needs to be really ruled out and how we can uh, see the reversal of the leads. How we need to note it. Whenever you see AVR, it's also called as a uni, uh, uni uh, bipolar and unipolar leads. So lead one, lead two, lead three will be called as bipolar. So if we see AVR, if the AVR is trying to have a negative deflections, what is this negative deflections and positive deflections? If you see a line, can you see a line which is trying to pass and it is trying to show all the rhythms in a line? That is called as isometric line. Means it is trying to fall either up or down. So if it is going up, then it will be called as positive deflections. If it is going down, then it will be called as negative deflections. So that is how you will be trying to see this AVR. So whenever you see a normal ECG, you need to see always the AVR should be negative. Means you need to understand this will be in the negative deflections. It needs to fall down not in the upright one. And lead one needs to be always in the positive pole. So here you can see in the lead one, it needs to be always in the positive pole. Great. I hope uh, we have done a great understanding about uh, the, uh, the basics. And now we are going to understand the five super easy steps for ECG interpretation for what we, you all have come for this webinar. So whenever we see ECG, we will be just scared how we need to interpret it. 
So let us talk about the first five steps. Determine the rhythm regularity, calculate the heart rate, assess the P waves, determine the PR interval, and determining the QRS duration. So these are the five steps. You can just take a screenshot because on this we are going to discuss for the whole session. If you know about this five steps, you can rule out any kind of ECG. So that's why it is called a super five steps. So the first one is determine rhythm regularity. When you talk about the rhythm regularity, how should we understand either it is a rhythm regular or irregular? So now let, let us go into deeper sessions of this. Determine the rhythm regular. If you see this one, always you have to understand how the rhythm will go. Here, it's a 25 seconds, uh, 25 millimeters per second it will try to run and it's a 10, 10 seconds ECG. So now if you see, so this is called as a P wave, this is QRS and this is T. So this is the first step we are going to do. So P wave, QRS and the T wave. Always you should never, uh, people what initially the beginners, what they will do is they will try to mistake between the T wave and the P wave. So always the little bump only can be seen in the P wave. And always the P wave will try to follow the QRS. So P and QRS will be the best friends. So you need to remember that. So T wave will always follow the P wave. P wave will always follow the P wave. But the P wave always needs, needs to follow QRS. So this is how the regularity needs to be checked. And now let us discuss whenever you see the distance between the R wave to R wave. So this is nothing but the R waves, right? This is the R wave, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All these are the R waves, right? So when you see this, you need to count the number of big boxes in this. What are the number of big boxes in it? One, two, three, and four, right? So the big boxes in between the R wave and R wave, you need to count. So the first step is that. So once you count it, and then you need to understand all the uh, complete ECG strip needs to have the same length. So now it is four boxes and here also it needs to be four boxes. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. So like this, you need to see for the regularity. If not, the easiest method which you can do is take a pen and paper and always just mark where the R waves and R waves are there and try to move the paper from the R wave to R wave so that you can understand whether the rhythm is regular or not. If you're poor in calculating the big boxes, and it's not a big job, I think it will be really easy when you start marking it. You can just pen down like one, two, and three, and four in between the R waves and R waves. So this is about the normal sinus rhythm. Don't worry, we, go, we are going to discuss more about it. Only we are going to discuss about the rhythm regularity. So this is about the rhythm regularity. Now, irregular rhythm. So to make you understand what is regular and irregular, I have just made this one. So if you see this here, can you see uh, the number of boxes in between the R wave and R wave? Somewhere it is trying to increase, somewhere it is trying to decrease. Isn't it? So this is how it is trying to uh, uh, join. So th this is nothing but the irregular rhythm. If you see the boxes or the R waves in between the R waves, you can just count it. One, two, three, four. One, two, one, one and a half. So like this means it says the big boxes between the R wave and R wave are not being countable and has been decreasing and increasing. So it says that the rhythm is not regular. So this is an example for irregular rhythm. One more example which I can show you. Regularly irregular. What it will try to show you is, so it is regular somewhere and it is trying to again miss its beat and again it, it is becoming irregular. Like here, you can see this. So it is being regular, means one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. So, but here again, it has missed it, missed the QRS beat. And again, it started with a, a, another beat. That is again four, means it is regular, but somewhere else it is irregular. What is it is nothing but, you can see this type of waves, uh, you can see this type of rhythm in the second degree heart blocks. So this is the difference between the rhythm regularity and irregularity. We have regular rhythm, that is normal sinus rhythm, which we have discussed. 
irregular rhythm that is nothing but the atrial fibrillation regularly irregular rhythm which i have shown you as a second degree heart block right hope you are understanding this can we go for the second step everybody can say s in chat box s everyone great good going superb so so second step is calculating the heart rate here comes a great difficulty for everyone to understand whether it is a regular rhythm irregular rhythm and then comes to whether it is a tachycardia bradycardia or tachyarrhythmia or bradyarrhythmia so when you see this what we have to do is normal heart rate first you have to identify that is according to ahf always we say 60 to 100 beats per minute is a normal heart rate means normal pulse right so this whenever you see this and with the normal pqrst where, when the shape size and everything is into the normal uh, stature then we call it as normal sinus rhythm okay so let us talk about the other one called sinus tachycardia when you call it as sinus tachycardia that is above 100 right and it is below uh, 60 will be calling it as bradycardia when you talk about this we need to understand how we are going with it less than 60 100 and uh, less than 60 will be bradi more than 100 will be tachy so here when you talk about this 100 to 150 beats per minute we call it as sinus tachy means we can manage it and it will be normal and when you call it as tachy arrhythmias when it is going beyond 150 then we call it as tachy arrhythmias when it is sinus bradycardia i al already said you it is less than 60 beats per minute bpm is nothing but beats per minute okay so 60 beats per minute then we'll be calling ca calling it as bradycardia if it is bradi arrhythmias it will be less than 50 beats per minute so this is how we need to understand the basics of calculating the heart rate whenever you see a rhythm first thing that you need to observe is pulse and in this session we are not going to deal about the mis and the medications that we are going to administer for which type of rhythm okay so in the future sessions we are going to uh, deal with it only the session is about the interpretation e even though in case if you have any doubts also we are going to clarify it at the last so this is how we need to calculate the heart rate and now you know about sinus normal sinus rhythm about the sinus tachycardia and about the arrhythmias either it is bradi or either it is tachy let us calculate if it is a regular rhythm how you need to calculate if it is a irregular rhythm how you need to calculate so for your understanding i have given you for a regular rhythm you need to count the 300 divided by number of large boxes why this 300 so 300 is nothing but here we have five boxes five columns five rows we have completely 50 50 multiplied by 6 we have 300 so here divided by number of large boxes so now let us uh, count here 1 2 3 and 4 so four boxes are there between the r wave and r wave so this is how i am going to calculate the regular rhythm so if we calculate uh, 300 divided by 4 so the answer is 75 beats per minute don't worry i am going to again going to give you the interpretation at the final within the just few slides so there you are going to count it and you are going to send me the answers so this is about the regular rhythm if it is there then the formula is 300 divided by number of large boxes where you are going to get the 75 beats per minute this is how you can calculate the heart rate just by seeing this so this is the number 1 2 3 and 4 between the r wave and r wave you need to count only one side you need to count you doesn't need to count whole paper you just need to count in between one r wave the another r wave so the number of boxes here is 4 that's why we have taken 4 here so 300 divided by 4 will be 75 beats per minute so let us talk about the irregular rhythm whenever there is a irregular rhythm then we need to see that the number of r waves in the 10 second strip multiplied by 6 so now if it is a irregular rhythm then what we are going to do is if it is a 10 second strip you have to multiply it by 6 if it is a 6 second strip you have to do the opposite 6 second strips you have to you can multiply it with 10 so 6 second strips mostly will be taking in the d fifths and how to identify that also we are going to teach you there here and uh, when you see this ecg paper this will be nothing but the 10 second strip which we commonly take so here also you just need to count what the number of r waves only 1 2 3 
फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एट नाइन टेन लेवन इफ इट इज लेवन और ट्वेल्व वॉट एवर द काउंट यू कैन गेट वॉट यू कैन डू इज मल्टीप्लाइड बाई नंबर ऑफ आर वेव मल्टीप्लाइड बाई सिक्स सो योर टोटल हार्ट रेट विल बी सेवेंटी एट बीट्स पर मिनट सो दिस इज हाउ यू कैन कैलकुलेट द रेगुलर रिदम एंड द इेगुलर रिदम सो रेगुलर रिदम प्लीज माइंड द फॉर्मूला एंड द इेगुलर रिदम प्लीज माइंड द फॉर्मूला because uh, the the next interpretations which we are going to discuss is just about the irregular rhythms now the another one more uh, irregular rhythm which i wanted to talk about the 6 seconds trip i said you whenever you are trying to take the 6 seconds trip you can just see this one so a small marking will be there within every 3 seconds so this is a 3 seconds mark every 3 seconds once it will be trying to give you a mark so where you can understand that this is a 6 seconds trip So if it's a six second trip, you can multiply it with ten. So for example, if you count this R waves, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So seven R waves multiplied by ten, as it is a six second trip. So it will be totally seventy beats per minute. This is a heart rate. I hope everybody are getting through. Can we go for the next step? We are done with the second step. So first step is anybody in the chat section will mark the first step. What is the first step? What is the first step? You can write it in the chat section. First step is about the rhythm regularity. Rhythm regularity. We have started up the first. Second one is how to calculate the heart rate. So those who have recently joined, please don't worry. You can just uh, it will be uh, again a recorded session. You can get it in the FB also. Please don't worry about it. Just follow from now. so first step is rhythm regularity very good so many are answering it the second step which we have discussed is how to calculate the heart rate superb so the third step which we are going to discuss is about the p waves so p waves are really really important whenever the p waves are not seen the qrs will be very worried here so it's a 25 uh, 25 mm per second it's nothing but the 10 second step which we are going to view here so if you see here so this is a p wave the friend of qrs always follows the qrs right and then the t wave t wave qrs and the, then the t wave so now what we are going to do is t wave is following the qrs everywhere the p wave is being observed or not the first thing yes yes the p wave is being followed great second step all the p waves are trying to be looking alike are they in the morphological areas either it is same or looking alike, uh, different so it should look alike so this is how we have to mark so it is same 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 that this is how and then the third step each p wave follows the qrs everywhere you have to also balance like how many p waves are there those many qrs also should be there then it says it's a normal one so p should always follow the qrs there should no uh, missing of qrs anywhere so this is how you can just monitor this so what is the interpretation now normal p wave one p wave following each qrs right so this is how you can assess for the p waves now i'm going to show you some abnormalities of this also how to determine the pr interval so this is how you can just determine the beginning of the p wave and the beginning of the r wave you need to just count the number of uh, uh, boxes in between this what is a normal pr interval what is a normal pr interval i'm just going to launch the poll again okay so the normal pr interval is 0.1 to 2 0.20 so this is a normal pr interval hope many many are answering in the chat box also good so the normal pr interval is 0.1 to 2 0.20 which is nothing but 3 to 5 small boxes great now we have to determine the pr interval this is how you can determine and you can see there is a prolonged pr interval so the before one if you see there is no prolongation and you can see within the 3 to 4 small box 3 to 5 small boxes but if you see here you can see there is a huge gap between the p and the qrs means it is trying to prolong whenever the pr interval is being prolonged then they can call it as blocks 
whenever you see blocks, the PR interval will need to be noted. The PR interval will be prolonged only in the blocks. So this is the uh, difference between the normal and abnormal of PR interval. Determine the QRS duration. What is QRS duration? So the normal QRS duration is what? Can everybody note in the chat section? Come on. What is the normal QRS duration? Superb. Sharanya, Dr. Sukit, and Maria. 0 0.04 to 0 0.12. Great. Superb. Many of you are answering. Great. So this is nothing but, if you see here, this is uh, just seeing showing you the two small boxes, which is nothing but 2 multiplied by 0 0.04, then it is nothing but 0 0.8 seconds. So if it is deeper than, uh, means if this QRS is deeper than uh, more than uh, two square boxes, then it says that there is some pathological changes in the QRS morphology. So, but let us talk about the normal morphology here. So this is a normal sinus rhythm, and this is ventricular tachycardia. If you see, this is a P QRS T, P QRS T. Whenever you see this, it needs to be normal. The normal morphology has been seen here. This is called normal sinus rhythm. But if you see here in the ventricular tachycardia, can you see the P wave anywhere? No P wave. Only the QRS is being seen. Only the QRS is trying to dominate and is trying to have a tachycardia. So the, that is why you are trying to see only the QRS, but not any other rhythms. Super. So this is what is called as ventricular fibrillation. Whenever you see the ventricular fibrillation, is nothing but the heart is not even trying to contract or to relax, but it's just trying to shake. It's nothing but fibrillation. It's also called as quivering effect in the medical terminology. Quivering is nothing but heart is not trying to contract or relax, but it's trying to only shake. So that is where you are trying to not to see either of the uh, waves here, but only the ventricles are trying to contract. That's where you can able to see this one. So this is about the QRS. So we are done with the five superb steps. So this is how now we are going to interpret it. I'm going to give you only three to four examples so that you can understand and then we can later discuss about your doubts. Great. What are super five steps? First step, analyze the rhythm. Analyze the rhythm. Second step, you can also answer in the chat box. First step, second step, third step, fourth step, and fifth step. First step, analyze the rhythm. Second step, you have to see the heart rate. Analyze the heart rate. Third step, what is the P wave, QRS duration, and PR interval. All these are the five super steps that you have to understand. Super. Great. Thank you. Alphonse, Julie, Esther. Super. Everybody are answering. Thank you. So this is uh, where we can end this. And now it is how you need to interpret the rhythm and you need to give me the answers. What is this rhythm? How many of you know this rhythm? You can just answer in the chat box and then we can, oh my God, I've just revealed the answer, but still. Okay, just, uh, uh, you can just answer in the chat box. What is this rhythm? Do we need to shock for this rhythm or doesn't require? You can just answer in the chat box. Wow, so many are there. So it's a uh, death. Assist to CPR, not required, flat line. Wow, great, non-shockable rhythm, super. If you know that it is a non-shockable rhythm, whenever in the movies, if you see, so many times they'll be making so many mistakes. Like whenever they see a flat line, they always take a defib and they start shocking the patient. That's a cinematic view. But whenever there is a flat line, we should never shock a patient. But the thing is, we need to follow the flat line protocol. First thing, you need to always check for the leads, chest leads, whether it is intact or not. Second thing, you need to check for the lead two, all the leads, lead one, lead two, lead three, and lead two as a standard lead in the monitor, whether all the leads are showing the same rhythm. And then at the lead, third step as a gain, means a diameter. Means uh, either the width or the length of the rhythm, either it has been decreased or increased. So that you have to see in the biomedical settings. So these three things you need to check whenever you see your assist tool. Without that, please don't uh, start a CPR. Whenever you doesn't connect the patient uh, with the leads also, automatically this shows you a assist tool. So don't uh, jump onto the patient and start a CPR. So this is about the assist tool and the flat line protocol. 
So this is a first trip which you need to analyze. So this is the assignment for you now. You need to answer in the chat box, which it, uh, you have to always take the five steps. I'm going to show you the five steps also for you. So these are the five steps. Either the rhythm is regular or not. You can answer in the chat box. Rhythm is regular or not. Okay, let me count it. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. So either, is the rhythm regular? Super. Everybody is saying it is regular. Super, you understood this. What is the rate now? If it is a regular rhythm, then you can count it just by 300 divided by how many number of boxes in between this, right? You can just count this. There are four boxes, means 300 divided by four. What is your answer for the rate? Wow, 75 beats per minute, great. Now we are about to see the P wave. P wave. So this is a P wave, all the P waves are same. Yes. All the P waves are following the QRS. Same number of P waves and same number of R waves are there. Count it. Then it is normal. PR interval. You have to count the PR interval. Just you can analyze it whether it is prolonged or not. That you can just uh, uh, assume it. Doesn't need to pen and paper. The PR interval is normal. Okay. The QRS duration. Great. So if the rhythm is regular and the, as you said, the rate is 75 and the P wave is normal and uh, the PR interval is also falling between three to five small boxes and the normal QRS duration is there. Means, what do you mean by that? What did we discuss? It's normal sinus rhythm. Wow, super. Shraddha, yes. Shruti, Dorothy, Abhya. So everybody is saying it's a normal sinus rhythm. Exactly. You understood the normal sinus rhythm perfectly. And now we are going to see some of the abnormalities. So second strip. So this is the assignment for you now. I'm uh, again the same five steps. Immediately you have to tell me what is this rhythm. Come on. Whether the rhythm is regular. Come on, come on, come on. Rhythm is regular. Yes. It's a regular rhythm. It's not a regular rhythm. If you wanted to understand whether it is a regular rhythm or not, you just need to count the number of boxes in between this. It's a one and a half, one and a half, one and a half. Everywhere it is going with the same. There's no change in that. It's two, two, two. Don't think that this is a half. This is half. Again, when you count it, it is going to be two. Right? It's a regular rhythm. Yes. Rate. Okay, what it means. What type of rhythm we have to say at the interpretation? Okay, great. Rhythm is regular, as you said, and the rate is counted within 140 beats per minute. And then P wave is normal. All the P waves are there. And you can see a small little bump joining with the T wave and the P wave. This is an M shape, which you always see in the tackies, right? So the PR interval is also normal. QRS duration is also normal. So it is nothing but the sinus tachycardia. Whenever you see this, you need to just follow the five super steps so that you can understand whether it is a tachycardia or not. As I always said you, with just with the number, the heart rate, you can define a ECG rhythm. The heart rate is with the R waves, you have counted it and you have said that it is more than 140. And in the initial time, we have discussed that whenever the heart rate is more than 100 and it is ranging between 150 to 180, it will be considered as tachy, sinus tachy, right? With this, you can define it as sinus tachycardia. So let us discuss one more. It is assignment now. Again, fun, fast. What is this rhythm? I need an answer first. So we discussed sinus tachy. Good. Good. Is it normal? You have to talk about the rhythm is normal. Okay. Rhythm is regular. The rate is, rate you have to count it. Regular. Yes. P wave. P wave is there everywhere. QRS is there, PR interval is normal, then what interpretation you will give for that? What is the heart rate? Defining the heart rate, you can just assume what is, what is this one? Wow, many of you are answering, good, super. Sinus bradycardia, super. Kiran, Ram Babu, Anne Mariam, yes, super, good, great. So it is nothing but 
regular rhythm 40 beats per minute normal and the pr interval and the qrs duration is also falling to the normal so it is sinus bradycardia so this is one more which already i have discussed but for you understanding either the rhythm is regular or not by seeing itself we can just understand whether the rhythm is regular or not you need to answer in the chat section not in the question and answer so rhythm is regular great what it is now many of the people are answering it's not irregular it is regular isn't it yes it's a regular rhythm can you see it's regular no way you can see the difference right and is completely having the same kind of morphology that is where it will be called as monomorphic if see the rhythm it is regular and it is 200 beats per minute it's nothing but the qrs you can see this one it's only the ventricular tachycardia so many are answering it's ventricular tachycardia good great you understood the interpretation that's called as monomorphic ventricular tachycardia mono means it's trying to look alike and same that's why it is called as monomorphic vt coming to this it's a fifth step strip what is this okay rhythm is regular either there is a rhythm there is a rhythm in in this one okay rhythm is visible something rate is there can you identify the rate because there is no r waves you cannot count the rate also and the p wave no p wave can be visible here pr interval no as the p wave is not there we cannot count the pr interval also qrs duration great so everything is irregular and it is no for everything and there will be no pulse here this is where the importance of the uh, nurse comes here because it's a ventricular fibrillation it's a shockable rhythm whenever you see this ventricular fibrillation always we need to shock the patient first that's our first thing right continuing the cpr don't delay for the uh, shock but whenever it is available you can need to shock in case of the defib getting the defib is delayed then you have to always start the cpr first so this is a uh, the strip i think what is this ventricular fibrillation wait so many have answered in the uh, in the chat so this is one more strip only thing for this is you just need to identify the rhythm rate whether it is p wave is present or not whether the pr interval is there qrs duration is there or not only two more are there you just need to answer this again uh rhythm is regular irregular good so many are answering nagaratna cb rimi reshmi bhuvaneshwari esther wow it's a irregular rhythm great rate so there are uh it's not the one where you need to just identify the number because it's a irregular rhythm you can just count the number and you can just identify whether it is a irregular rhythm or not when the p wave is present but only one qrs have multiple p waves that is where you can just see a sawtooth shape and here you can see there is a short sawtooth it's nothing but where we we use this for the cutting of wood right it just look like a sawtooth shape whenever you see the atrial flutter you can observe this sawtooth shape and it will be a irregular rhythm uh there the heart rate will be different but uh, uh, as of that as a typo error so what is the strip last but not the least it's a final before step rhythm is regular or irregular by just seeing this can you say is it regular yes everybody says it's a irregular rhythm super rate okay p wave p wave is present can you see the p wave how many of you can see the p wave now super if you say yes then i wanted to say <laughs> so there is no p wave here because it is trying to fibrillate can you see the scribbling effect that you can observe over the rhythm this is nothing but the scribbling so that is nothing but where you are trying to understand that the rate uh, the atria are just trying to fibrillate it's not trying to contract it's just trying to fibrillate right so it is a irregularly irregular rhythm and there are more than uh, 13 r waves and there no p wave and no the pr interval if the p wave is not there then we cannot count the pr interval also then the qrs duration is also the normal so it is called as atrial fibrillation 
the main difference that you have to understand between the ventricular fibrillation and the atrial fibrillation is whenever the ventricles are trying to contract, what you can see, only the ventricles will be there, right? Ventricle fibrillates. Only the ventricles will try to fibrillate. Only this scribbling effect will be there. Uh, just, I'll show you the previous one. So this is how the ventricular fibrillation will look like. So can you see anywhere the P wave, but the QRS will never be evident in the ventricular fibrillation. But when you see this in the same uh, atrial fibrillation, the QRS will be evident and the, R, uh, the P waves will be trying to fibrillate. That's where it is called as when, uh, atrial fibrillation. So there's a final one which I have already shown you and discussed in the first one. What is this? Is the rhythm regular? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And again, there is a irregularity. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four. So rhythm is regular? Regularly irregular. Good. So many are saying. Regularly irregular. Super. The rate, can we count the rate? Yes. You can count the number of R waves and the P waves and the PR interval and the QRS duration. Great. What do you think the interpretation would be? Bob. I think everybody got this. So this is the heart block. So many are answering. It's uh, Pooja Kiran, second degree heart block. Great. But in this session, we are not going to discuss about the details in the uh, blocks, but just to understand and to make sure that what is the abnormality, what is the normal. Okay. So you can see the pre progressive prolongation of PR interval means if you see here, the distance between the P and the QRS is different. And here it is different. Again, here it is different. So this is called as progressive prolongation of PR interval and where it will be with a missed beat. Where it is a missed beat. So this is where you can call it as Morbid's type 2. So in the future sessions, we are going to discuss more about the medications and what we re really exactly need to do. And now with this, I'm going to stop this. Thank you so much. And for a few polls, I'm going to launch. Just the two polls are there. Okay. Just answer me, what is this? Bipolar leads are called what? Which of this? Bipolar leads. After the session, nobody should sleep. So it's uh, AVR, AVL, AVF is unipolar. Great. Superb. Wow. That's a great energy. Even in the afternoon uh, session, people are uh, trying to sit happily and trying to answer each and every question. Wow. Okay, I'm going to end this poll. Just I'm going to share this. AVR, AVL, AVF will be called as unipolar leads as we discussed. It's going to show only unipolar means only one direction. And if you talk about the lead one, lead two, lead three, this will be called as bipolar leads. And if you talk about V1 to V6, this will be called as chest leads. Right? But great, everybody, most of the people were answering correctly. One more. What is one big box in ECG represents and how many seconds would it take? Well, the answers are very faster. How many boxes do we have? One big box will have five, four, three, two, one. Great. I'm going to end the poll faster and the chat, chat box also because people are trying to delay in the polls. People are also trying to answer in the chats. Great. Superb. It's almost done. Great. Yes, I'm going to share you the results. So it's nothing but the five small boxes. As you said, it is 0 0.20 seconds. It's not four or it's not three. So five small boxes will be present in each big box. Let me share you the last poll of the session. What is the formula for calculating the irregular heart rate? We have seen regular because most of you will be uh, thinking about two formulas I have said you for the irregular. If you choose two also, that's fine. If you choose one also, that will be fine. I need to see which one you will be answering more. I hope everybody are answering the great, uh, correct answers only. Support. Ah, still people are answering. Which is the formula? Regular heart rate. Regular heart rate we discussed. It's about the 300 divided by number of 
big boxes in between the R wave to R. What is about the irregular heart rate? Okay, I'm going to end the poll. Here the answers are number of R waves and six seconds in multiplied by 10. I said you about two strips. One is about 10 second strips. One, one is about six second strip. Six second strip, which you get in the DFib. Also in the 10 second strip, which you get in the ECG paper. So these two are the uh, correct answers, but not the last one. So this is, these are the two answers, A and B. Great. Here I am done. Thank you so much. Uh, if you have any doubts, please let us know in the chat section. Uh, over to uh, Amasa. Yeah, uh, I'm Dr. Himleta. Uh, thanks, Dr. Amar. Uh, it's a fantastic presentation by Pratyusha. Uh, I think most of them who have attended the staff, uh, they will be definitely benefited from this session. And I hope they will never make a mistake in interpreting the interpretation of the ECG. And I recommend many more staff. I can I, I uh, wish all the uh, staff, uh, nursing staff who have attended this session, they can pass it on to the their friends and many more uh, sessions, further sessions to come. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, Patricia, for amazing presentation. Uh, I hope everybody liked it. Uh, even though ECG seems to be uh, difficult, you made it very simple and uh, understandable interpretation you made very simple. Yet there are areas where nurses should know the arrhythmias and emergencies. They should know early warning sign, what is VT, what is VF, when to escalate to the clinical team. It's really a helping tool. And uh, definitely participants are very interestingly, proactively involved into it. And uh, they've given most of the good answers and really happy to have this kind of sessions. And we'll be having this kind of uh, sessions every Friday at 3 p.m. We'll be getting you more interesting topics like this, but a few of the chatting topic box I have seen that they want to further continuation into ECG. We'll see what best we can do. So please log into our uh, Ashwada Facebook uh, uh, website. You'll be updated all the further topics and speakers, renowned speakers will get to you. Well done, uh, Patricia. Thank you to digital team, Pawan for backup. Uh, thank you once again. Thank you. Uh, so, can I take some time to just Mr. tell them Mr. about uh, what Mr. they are trying to do? Any doubts you are having, please, I forgot. Any doubts you are having, please uh, ask us. We'll go through it. Patricia is ready. We are uh, there in the panels. So many are asking for sharing the PPT. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> sure, we'll do that. Excellent class. You provide certificates. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay, we'll try to see that e certificates can be provided from by Shuda Hospitals. Definitely we'll do that. Yes, yeah, PDF also. We'll try to do that. So the recording will be available, I think, uh, in the AFB. I hope. I have to check with the uh, Pavan. I shared the link in the chat box. People can continue watching in the Facebook live. So, yes. Good. So you can also ch uh, uh, check in the chat box now. Uh, Pavan is going to share you the link in the Facebook. You can also, in case if you have missed from the initial part of the session because of any kind of technical issues, you can also just join there and uh, just clarify your doubts. You can also post there. We are going to answer that. Yes, uh, so many are asking, is the webinar going to be every Friday? Yes. It's 3 p.m. Every Friday at 3 p.m. we are going to uh, take the webinars and the most important topics and which can be useful for the nurses, we are going to take it. So you can definitely enjoy the same which you did it today. And it will be same as the interactive sessions. Deepa, yeah, thank you, Deepa. Yes. Super. Because in this session, we didn't discuss about the medications and the further uh, myocardial infarction and all, because it will be further delayed. First, we'll try to understand the basics. Please do practice this. It doesn't mean like once you attended the session, you will not get it very easily. It comes with just only with the practice. Just go every day, just monitor it. Uh, uh, whenever you see the cardiac monitors, you need to observe the rhythms. First, check with the heart rate. 
whenever you are checking with the heart rate and sometimes we also have the shockable non shockable rhythms the future sessions we are going to definitely discuss about all this when you can shock when you doesn't need to shock which medications needs to be given and how you need to immediately act in the situations emergency situations yeah thank you so much i think uh, we're done with this any yeah, questions can be encouraged Pooja Kiran is asking, how can we calculate to calculate in the five and six second strip? So we have only two, which is one is the six second strip and the 10 second strip, as we discussed, 10 second strips, which we are going to get it in the ECG paper, which from the ECG machine. But in the six second strips, which you can see is like, there will be small dots, which I have shown you in the initial part of the session. There you can just observe the uh, the line which is trying to be bumped up from the other uh, apart from the other square boxes. Yeah. The, that's where you can you can understand whether it's a, five, a six second strip or ten second strip. That's the only question. Thank you so much, Prasanna. Any more questions can be answered and uh, in the future sessions, we'll make sure that the most interesting topics will come up. Thank you. I think we are done with the questions, ma'am. We can close the session. Yes. Thank you, everyone, Thank for you, participating. Uh, most of the nursing fraternity, a lot of Ishoda also I have seen from Northeast Manipur and all that known to us. I am seeing through the Logins, please uh, be updated uh, every Friday 3 p.m. We'll be updating your important topics. Ah, Thank it. you. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.